So, um, it's been a while. Welcome back to another Quadon VR sculpting video, where I'm using Blender for the low poly model, Instant Mesh for mesh cleanup, Substance Painter for the textures, and well, finally I'm doing some things in Unity as well. So, this time I'm making a type of, well, a giant piranha of sorts. You can see how I'm starting with a giant eyeball. Well, something like an eyeball. <laughs> it's uh, in the middle of the forehead of this monster fish. And once I have the eyeball in place, I create a second volume and start blocking out the shapes of the, the eye socket. I found that it's a good place to get started since, well, the whole uh, shape of the, the monster needs to work around this big sphere located in the forehead. And if I put that in place first, it's not gonna change, it's just a sphere, uh, essentially. So it gives me a very good center focal point to work around. And you can see here how I'm working out the, the outlines, the shapes of the, the different parts of the, the creature. The, the concept piece that you can see in the background, together with a screenshot of an old 3D model, is a couple of years old. It's, yeah, there you can see the 3D model. It's something I made originally for Counterspell, uh, the same project that the Oracle was intended for. And this is a sort of reimagining of that design, I suppose. The, I'm using the concept art and the old 3D model as more of an inspirational start point. So I'm allowing myself to kind of deviate a bit from it. And working in VR really allows you to play around and see what works and get a very tangible feel for what you're doing and how it's turning out. You can see here how I realized that the, the big central sphere is actually protruding into the mouth cavity of the, the creature. So I decide, hey, that's kind of cool, let's keep that. And I, instead of trying to fill fill it up and block it off and reshape the whole design, I instead just let it protrude there and add this little edge and crease around it. And once I've got most of these shapes filled in, I return to the eyeball and make it transparent. You can set up the different uh, volumes in Cordon to have different sort of render modes. And with the eyeball transparent, I can go in and start tweaking how the actual inside of the, the cavity where the eyeball rests uh, looks like. And with most of the rough shape of the main part of the body in place, I get started on a sort of medium detail pass. I'm at this point I'm still working out a bit of the general shapes and I'm adjusting some stuff here and there but I also start working in a couple of the bigger creases and uh, sort of edges where the, the back meets the, uh, the gut area of the fish so to speak. Now the reason that this video has taken quite a eh, some time to get done is that I wanted to actually start putting these properly into Unity. I've been talking about it for a while now and it's been sort of a goal since the start of uh, me making these videos that I want to create these real-time assets sculpted in Cordon that I then take into Blender and Rig and animate and all that stuff. This is Except for the VR part, this is all things that I've done before, so it's mainly been about figuring out the workflow from the VR sculpting part to uh, getting these actual functioning uh, creatures 
in a game environment. And, well, okay, I haven't... <laughs> the programming part is kind of new to me as well, so that's the main part for the delay in the videos. I've been uh, learning a lot about Unity and coding and so on. I have quite a lot of uh, education in AI and so on, but I wasn't quite used to C Sharp, so all that was new to me. And I suppose the plan going forward is to start... I'm gonna keep making these sort of strictly VR sculpting focused art type videos where I'm showing how I'm actually doing the sculpting and so on. But I'm also going to try and start making some devlogs and talk a bit about how I'm designing the, the AI and the gameplay around actually interacting with these creatures in, well, in a game that I've started making over the last couple of uh, two or three months or so. And yeah, maybe my next video will be about that or I actually have, <laughs> I've already made another um, couple of VR sculpts that I want to uh, sort of show as well. So I'm not sure in which order I'm going to make them, but hopefully this channel would start having a bit more variation in uh, sort of material I'm putting out. Looking a little more at the, the sculpt that I'm currently working on, you can see how I've started to add more of these mid details and even a bit, little bit of uh, fine details. I'm working out the different places where the fins will connect to the body. The back fin and the dorsal fin, I don't know what they're called, I'm not an <laughs> expert on marine biology. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> connecting up all the fins. I'm, I'm gonna create these. I, I am. I did create these as, uh, as separate volumes. You can see here I'm starting to work on the, the back fin. I'm just gonna call it back fin. And using a smaller brush than I have been doing this far, I really want it the fins to feel like this sort of uh, ragged, uh, stringy sort of fans almost. These things are supposed to be more or less undead in a sense. So I wanted to convey this with uh, a lot of tears and um, tears, yeah, tears, sort of parts missing and uh, yeah, an overall sort of bushy look to them. I've mentioned this a bit in my other videos as well, but working this way in the VR has been such a game changer for me. You can see, well, rather spastically, <laughs> the, the, these are sped up quite a bit. The, the 3D model in the background, the old one that I did oh, six, seven years ago or something like that. How it's rather stiff. It's uh, I actually modeled it, well, very old school in Blender, just pushing vertices and so on. And it ended up having a rather angular and uh, not very organic look. It almost looked like some sort of uh, drone or machine. This on the other hand, when I'm working like this in VR, I can really go wild. And uh, even though... <laughs> I've found that I tend to maybe go a bit nuts on the details and all of these little parts sprouting out here everywhere is of course gonna pay dividends <laughs> down the line once I start working on the low poly models and so on. It's all details that I have to take into account. Uh, I'm creating the real time models that I'm using in Unity, which of course means that uh, I have to make a little bit of sacrifice and so on when I'm trying to stick to the poly budget. I've uh, 
set a sort of poly budget for myself for these size of uh, creatures, these types of creatures, and you're gonna see later in Unity this thing is about the size of. Uh, yeah, what should I compare it to? About a cubic meter or so. A little bigger than that. So it's not super tiny. But I'm still trying to put them at around 5,000 triangles or so for the low poly model. Of course, once I start doing the texturing in Substance Page and so on, I can add in a bit of um, detail that's been lost and sort of cheat as usually I mean <laughs> that's 90% of uh, making games like this you have to take everything all your elaborate designs and ideas and creations and really start optimizing the crap out of them it, I mean you you want them to you want to have some compute cycles <laughs> left over for all the AI and physics and uh, everything the player is doing and so on so you just you don't want to dump these, obviously these like five millions or so triangles on the graphic card. That's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this in mind, of course, as well when I'm working on these sculpts. But yeah, I tend to uh, tend to get lost when I'm uh, working on these VR sculpts. It's uh, so easy to get into this sort of uh, flow state where you're just having fun being creative and working on bringing your ideas to life. I've uh, actually, at this point, uh, a little while back, you could see how I took the teeth models and realizing that maybe I was a bit too stingy with the detail level, I went and remeshed them. Uh, you can do this in, in Cordon, you can take a volume and say, hey, uh, I don't have enough uh, of a resolution when I'm working on this, so take this model and yeah, split it into smaller chunks. With uh, pretty much all of these different volumes in place, you can see how I start my uh, fine detail pass and uh, that I start connecting up all these volumes. You can see how I've uh, chosen parts that naturally feels distinct from each other and here I'm adding the creases and so on that comes from having two different uh, volumes connected to each other, like the teeth and the gum and the fins and the body and so on. I, um, I also wanted to, well, <laughs> I suppose address you whoever is watching this. When I started making these videos, I didn't really have any expectations. It was mostly it's something I wanted to try for many years. And uh, it's so much fun being able to go back and look at your own old projects and hear your thoughts and process and so on. And well, see how you developed over the years and yeah I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's <laughs> you're actually there's a few of you who've uh, taken the time to look at um, these little project videos and even leave it encouragements and comments and questions and it's um, yeah it's a lot of fun uh, thanks <laughs> for uh, coming with me on this um, strange experiment. <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm reading all the comments and I haven't been able to answer all of them yet. I'm still thinking a bit on how to address some of them and some of them I want to address in uh, how I uh, how I make my videos. And I've uh, had some requests for more tutorial like uh, content and I guess I might be able to look into that at some point. It's this whole thing has been very organic. And <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun and I, I really appreciate uh, all of you taking the time to to interact with 
whatever this is <laughs> this is turning out to be but yeah at this point i'm uh, feeling pretty happy with uh, where i'm at with this whole uh, design i'm uh, going in and doing some of the final little details like the, the sort of um what do you call them don't start with the concave convex thing again <laughs> the little bowls in the uh, uh, large eyeball and yeah here we are at this point i start exporting anything and the way i'm doing this is i'm exporting each individual volume as a separate i think it's fbx or whatever it is OBJ maybe yeah um yeah here here you can see how i'm exporting just the eyeballs and just the fins and so on the reason i'm doing this is that i found it produces less uh, errors and so on and you can see here that i managed to get all of the volumes into blender without a pitch just rotate place the model in the center of the scene make sure they all share an origin point in the center so it rotates around a center of gravity sort of and then i go into instant mesh do a bit of mesh cleanup before unwrapping everything and uh, taking the high poly model over into substance painter and what you're seeing here is uh, the the body mesh once i was in blender i ended up merging all the fins and the teeth and the body and so on into a single mesh since well you're never gonna disconnect any of those parts the um, the actual eyeballs as well as the big uh, sphere uh, with the little balls in it i ended up texturing separately and here i'm showing how i'm adding in a bit of details uh, using just a scale texture but i'm only using the normal component of it and well this is how the final high poly texture ends up looking like bring it back into blender i just connect up all the nodes and make sure it's still working as intended but of course um <laughs> well here you see me taking the textures into a wonderful little tool that i found on itch.io called pixel tool where i'm yeah pixelating the texture turning it into this low res with uh, sharp pixels and a little bit of dither uh, thrown in as well so here you can see the low poly model with the uh, pixelated texture and i of course uh, rigged the whole thing and done a couple of animations so that i can have it swimming around and well, <laughs> chomping, uh, trying to eat the player. And with all that in place, I suppose it's time to show my first little bit of gameplay. Yeah, uh, a little short preview of <laughs> what I've been up to the last three or four months or so. Uh, hopefully my next <laughs> video won't take so long, but feel free to leave any thoughts, suggestions and so on. And until next time. <laughs>